About four days ago, I did a video stating Linux effing sucks and pretty much covered a lot of different things in the video that were pretty much sarcastic and more for comic relief than anything. But I did come to the conclusion at the end of the video, yes, Linux sucks, but it sucks a whole lot less than Mac and Windows. I have had hundreds of comments on this video, most of them enjoying the humor in the video, but I've got a couple of comments in the video that didn't like it all that much. As a matter of fact, we're going to cover two comments today that pretty much explain to us why Linux hasn't been adopted. And what I need you all to do, I need all you Linux gurus and all you Linux newbies to please watch this video because I want your input on this one. In my opinion, I believe he's wrong. You may have a different opinion. So that way we can actually start a conversation. So that's what we're going to be doing today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is brought to you by OnlyOffice. If you want to go to their website, it's OnlyOffice.com. Are you presently running something like a Google Docs or using Microsoft Online? Do you know that all of your emails, photos, and everything they have access to, they can read, they can use for whatever they want? Don't believe me? Go look it up. You don't have that problem with OnlyOffice. It's a secure office and productivity suite. Now, if you scroll down on their website, you've got OnlyOffice Docs, which is collaborative online document editors, you got spreadsheets, documents, presentations, and forms. It's got the highest compatibility with Microsoft Office, easy integration with ready-to-use connectors, and WOPI support and well-documented API. And then you also have OnlyOffice Workspace. Do you have a business? You can run your entire business through OnlyOffice. It's got document, email, CRM, projects, calendar. It's got enhanced security features, including private rooms, LDAP and Active Directory authentication, compliance, and international security standards. And speaking of security, let's go over here and let's take a look at the security real quick. It lets you know we provide a comprehensive range of security tools and services keeping your data safe on all fronts. Host solutions on premises, encrypt documents and data, customize access settings, and connect authentication services, and manage access rights to protect yourself from unauthorized access, data leaks, and insider actions. Now let's go back real quick. In one of my favorite things I like about it, it's available for Windows, Mac OS, and for Linux. If you use Linux, you can get OnlyOffice. It is a great tool. You can also get it on the Google Play Store for your Android phone or at the Apple iTunes Store for your iPhone. So zip on over and check it out. OnlyOffice.com. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Now, let's get to the video. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right into this comment. And this viewer right here pretty much explains to us Linux users why it hasn't caught on. It states the reason why Linux hasn't caught on is its package management and the lack of choices on installs, usually because of package managers. I don't care how much they crow about having solved the dependency hell, only a few package managers have, and they aren't very popular and or user friendly. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here in the comment because I wanna go over here real quick. And I could really pull this up from anywhere, but I wanted to just go ahead and bring this up so we can kind of look at some of the popular package managers and things like that. So if we come down here, they got a list of their favorite package managers. Well, we have Yum, which is the old time RPM front end, which is now gradually being replaced by DNF. Then we've got Apt, which is kind of a D package front end. It's Debian, Ubuntu, things like that. Then you have Pac-Man, which is the popular Arch Linux package manager. And it allows using a pre-built package or build it yourself. And in Arch, you can also use app images and, and flat packs and snaps if you want to. Then you've got Zip and Zipper, a popular front-end RPM used in OpenSUSE and SUSE. Then you've got DNF, which we just covered, which is being used by Red Hat and Fedora. It's kind of taking place of Yum. Then you've got Gentoo's Portage. It provides a fantastic way to manage packages. And then they do have some honorable mentions, which is you know, EO package, Nix, and Snap. But there's a lot of different ways out there to get packages on a lot of different distributions. And quite honestly, I haven't had any problems with these package managers. Now, the dependencies that he's talking about, after you read these first two sentences on his comment, we're going to get into now. And he says, you can't have two versions of the same library on the same OS unless they have the version number in the file name. And that's not guaranteed. OSs that are actually popular allow a different version library to be put in the program directory. In the Linux package managers, you can't choose what drive your 5GB program it is installed in. 
okay, time out. I understand some people want complete control over their system, but honestly, if I'm downloading a 5 gigabyte app or a 10 gigabyte app, if I don't have room on my hard drive to put it there and I want to put it somewhere else, I can actually make changes to my file system to have it pointed in a different direction. This is something you can accomplish. Then you don't have to worry about it. It shouldn't be something you have to do every single time you download something, i.e. Windows. You have to do that. It pops up and says, we can put it here, or you can change it and put it somewhere else you want. If you're wanting Windows, just stick with Windows. That's my personal opinion. On with the comment. You can't just have checkboxes to choose if you want to install the 9GB sample library or not, but must instead learn the name of every package you do and don't want. If you're requiring a single package, and you know what packages you're requiring, why would you not know the name of them? I'm not trying to be sarcastic here. What I'm saying is, if you know you're going to download a specific application, and you want two different libraries, and you know the names of these libraries, why is it so hard not to know the name for when you want to install something? Comment continues, they could have a real setup, like Qt does, but some package managers even go so far as to prohibit any user interaction during the installation. Okay, I don't know why that would be a problem. Why would that be a problem? You Linux gurus out there, please chime in in the comments. Comment goes on. I can only decide that such crippleware package managers are made that way because of Microsoft or other agents seeking to sabotage the free systems. I don't think Microsoft has anything to do with it. I think, actually, at the end of the day, in a roundabout way, Microsoft may have affected the way it's done, but I don't think they have anything to do with it. And I will explain. How many of you all, when you were on Windows, downloaded a program and it shared a DLL file with another program? And then you got to the point to where you were like, okay, I'm going to uninstall this program. And for some reason, that program uninstalled the DLL file. And the next thing you know, that other program that relied on that DLL file no longer works. I don't think this is much of a problem now as it used to be, but that used to happen quite often back in the day. Now, if you disagree with me, or if you've had something like this happen to you in the past when you actually had to use Windows, please put that in the comments below. Now, it goes on to say it'll be harder to do that to React OS. React OS? Isn't this something that's been like 20 years in the making and it's still in alpha? So in another 20 or 30 years, when they finally have a substitute for Win 2000, it will be a viable alternative to a by then close to obsolete OS. Fix the awful package management, and then I'll consider such an OS. Linux package management, in my use case, I've never had a problem with it. I have never been able not to get the libraries for applications that I want to use. It's never had issues. Now, I may have a couple times in Arch when I was using the Arch user repository, had some issues there that I didn't have some libraries that needed to be installed, but it was a real quick fix. Zip on over to the Arch Wiki and handle it. Now, here's where we understand what this statement actually means. I'm always wanting to run bleeding edge audio apps, but have a stable version of an OS installed. So what does that have to do with running bleeding edge audio apps? There are stable versions of Arch out there, which you can run the bleeding edge audio apps on. Guaranteed recipe for dependency hell on per 90% of the distros downloaded. Not a problem on OS X or Windows. Pitiful. The reason to hate Windows have greatly increased recently, but the Linux package managers ruin most of the alternatives. No, they don't. Here's what I said in my video the other day. Do you use an operating system for something specific? Is that the tool you want to use? Then stick with it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work for you. My question is, these bleeding edge audio apps, can you run them in a flat pack? Can you run them in an app image? Well, his next comment covers some of that. So let's zip on over to the next comment. Here's a second comment. Another viewer gave him an idea of something to do. And here's his response. I guess that might work for some, but it is by no means as intuitive as a custom setup. You usually can't just check what parts to install and that doesn't prevent dependency hell. Why would you be checking to install certain things and not install certain things. When you go into a package manager, in my experience, whether it be Synaptic Package Manager, all the way up to the AUR, when I click on something to install, it gives me a list of dependencies it's gonna install along with it. I install it, I'm good to go. Now, you're wanting to have two different set of dependencies. My question is, why not use an app image? 
Why not use a flat pack? He's going to get to that at the end of this statement. Thus, it may mostly solve one of the three glaring problems of most Linux package managers. There are Gobo Linux, NixOS, and a few of BSD that don't have these problems. So, the thing to do is realize the importance of a second generation manager and for it to be widely adopted. Since not happening, those flavors of Linux suck. I say this because three times I installed Linux. The two of those times I gave up on it precisely these problems. Precisely these problems. Okay, so in other words, you tried Linux, but because you couldn't use two or three different libraries to run a application, you decided to ditch it and you went back to Windows. Good. I'm glad. That tool works for you. Stick with it. Now, the third time that he left Linux was due to a program not running correctly under Wine, which was my primary use case. Why are you just using Linux to use Wine? If you want to use Windows, stick with Windows. I tell people this all the time. Linux isn't for everybody. Okay? The package management system for those of us watching this video that love Linux and use Linux works completely fine for us. But you're over here trying to do 13 different things on two different libraries. If that's what you want to do, stick with Windows or Mac. Be our guest. Enjoy the tool that works for you. And the end of this comment says, sure, there are Snap apps, etc., but they seem to have a copy of every library they use, so they are huge. Yes, they are. And that's precisely why some people use them. Because when you use an app image or a flat pack, I don't even want to say snap, but let's say you're using an app image or a flat pack and you install it on your system. That whole program and all of its dependencies are completely in one area. They're not involved with your operating system at all. They may take a little longer to load, but everything they need is in that nice little package and they don't involve themselves in the rest of your operating system. But my question is, if using these bleeding edge audio apps is so important to you, but you don't want to download them because they're in an app image that gives you all the libraries that you're complaining about that you don't have on a regular Linux install, but you can install them with a flat pack or with an app image and use them the way you want to use them, it seems to me that you're just here to complain and to point out what you believe is the weakness of Linux. All you Linux gurus out there, if you got a different answer or you've got something else you want to say, please put that in the comments below. Here's what I said the other day at the end of my Linux Epping Sucks video, and I'm going to say it again today. If Windows works for you, use it. If Mac works for you, use it. Know that your privacy and all your data is free for them to use anytime they want. If you can come to Linux and you want to learn Linux and you care about your privacy and you care about freedom as in free and you care about freedom as in free, come to Linux. You've got an alternative to use app images or flat packs. If you refuse to use those because you say they're quote unquote too big and unwieldy, you just need to stick with Windows and Mac. That's my opinion. If you disagree with me, leave it in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the content that we are creating, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, throwing us a donation on PayPal, or zipping on over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.